Well, guys, it is the 29th of February. $50 February is almost over. The pantry challenge is officially over, even though we're still going to keep going. But before I share our final video for the 2024 year, I wanted to give you a glimpse into 2023's $50 February. So I have kind of combined footage from the whole month into a bit longer video, but it is fascinating to see that before you start to see what we kind of got up to here this year because we kind of took a bit of a different approach and it's interesting to see the difference in the final results. So without any further ado, I'm going to regale you with 2023's $50 February so you can see all the trials and tribulations that we had as we navigated our way through this challenge for the first time. February 17th, 18th, not sure what the date is, it all just kind of becomes a blur, but we are halfway through and we have definitely had some great uh, ups and downs with this challenge. Today's video is about $50 February and where we're sitting in the numbers so far. So this should be a super easy question to answer at face value, but how much have we spent to date? We are up to $83.20. So we're not doing too bad for a family of four. But we haven't actually spent that. That's the little like clause there because we actually have just been taking things out of our pantry because we do keep a stock pantry and that's just how we roll here. So what we've been doing is as we've removed items from the pantry, we have a pretty good idea of what we've spent on those items because we buy the same thing over and over and over. That's the beauty of stockpiling. And so we just kind of have a price number in our mind of what we allow for purchasing. Like for example, I don't buy butter if it's not at least 488 or less. So we're just budgeting every time we take a block of butter out of the freezer, 488, because that's my number that I will not go over for a block of butter. Now saying that times are changing and I think we may have to adjust some of our numbers by the end of these pantry challenges that we've been doing, but we'll come on that in another video. I think the big thing that we've been noticing is dairy. We spend a lot on dairy. We already knew that our budget was going to be pretty much gone just on dairy. We did have a few things that we took out of the pantry, such as flour. I started a new bag of flour at the beginning of the month just so that we could track it. Rolled oats. Um, what else have we got? We did splurge on some broccoli because it was a fantastic deal this past week. So we have had a couple heads of broccoli in there and onions because I unfortunately do not have any more onions from our garden. So we are purchasing onions now. And uh, that's pretty much what makes up the brunt of this, as well as some of our drinks that we drink and uh, one bag of nachos. All in all, it's not been a big change, except this challenge has emphasized something that we already knew, essentially where the holes were in relation to what we can grow or find around us uh, without having to purchase it and be dependent on uh, the outside world, for lack of a better way to put it. Dairy is a big one. I'm not going to talk about it too much because we've got some plans to sort of uh, work with that in the near future and we'll see how that goes. But the other big one is the grains. We are looking at ways of reducing our consumption of cereal grains. Not eliminate them, but reduce it. That doesn't mean we still won't purchase things. That doesn't mean we still won't purchase them for livestock food, which is a whole nother side of the discussion uh, related to the, the actual cost of producing your food. But we're basically, this This has given us the push to pursue a bit of a lifestyle change, for lack of a better way to put it, that uh, could help us meet our goals of being a little more sustainable in the near or attainable future. And one of those things uh, really revolves around bread, which everybody loves bread, but bread requires a lot of cereal grains to produce. And therefore, something that we are doing as part of this challenge is... We are putting the bread maker away and I am disposing of my sourdough starter. As many of you have seen in the numerous pantry challenge videos, as well as the $50 February videos for the last month and a half, bread was something that was always nice and fresh on the shelf or be made in the bread maker. That is something we have conscientiously made the decision is going to go. It's a big step for us, but that is one uh, very interesting thing that has come out of this challenge. And this is where I would say, as Chris touched on just a moment ago, this challenge has been fantastic for helping us to recognize the things that 
maybe we should try and push a little bit more for uh, you know things that we can produce and cutting out the things or at least minimizing some of the things that we cannot produce. We've really, really drastically cut pastas, rice, and grain products because that is something that we noticed as the budget as the budget started to creep. Those were big items and uh, we had been kind of complacent in recognizing. It's not that we didn't know, but we chose to ignore the fact that maybe that was a lifestyle change that we should make. So we are into the third week of the $50 February 2023. So as you saw in last week's video, we kind of discussed some changes that we have come about to making in our diet in order to try and make this challenge and way of life possible. So this week is all about trying to eat what we could grow. And now don't get me wrong, there are certain things that we will never be able to grow and therefore they are in items such as salt and um, some spices, but realistically most things, if we put our mind to it, we can do. So I'm going to show you a bunch of meals that we've done this week that realistically, if we put our mind to it, we could grow all of this food ourselves. So here I have compiled everything that is going into dinner on our first night of this week. I am going to be making a spicy balsamic chicken, but I'm subbing in rabbit meat instead. But basically everything that you see here could be produced on the farm. Uh, we are using our goose lard to cook in. Canada Crookneck squash is going to bulk this out instead of rice. Red onions, peppers, and the meat obviously from the farm. What I have here actually is, uh, normally we would not buy bok choy, but we went to uh, the store to pick up milk and walked by the reduced vegetable bin and there was a huge bag of bok choy for a buck. So this is actually our third time being able to eat this and we did budget it into our $50 February. But in all fairness, we did grow bok choy this year. We just didn't grow enough to store it or keep it going in the grow room. But it is something that has potential. The sauce on this is actually sweet chili sauce. And I did not make a sweet chili sauce, but I did make chili sauce and Thai sauce. And the two of them combined taste very much like the store-bought chili sauce. So uh, sweet chili heat, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that's what we're using is the two of them combined. And the recipe also calls for balsamic vinegar and garlic. Now the garlic is from the garden, but the balsamic vinegar is store-bought. Uh, but otherwise, I think everything in this is what we could actually grow on the farm. I'm not sure if balsamic vinegar is something that you could make. I've never actually looked into it. And I will also say in the Thai sauce, the homemade Thai sauce, there is quite a bit of fish sauce. Now, Chris has high hopes of making fish sauce. Watch this space to see if that actually happens. Cause as you know, he does like to grow fish, but for now that is a store-bought product. But otherwise we're pretty much, uh, homemade on that. We're going to get this all made up. There isn't too much to it. It's just bunging it all in a pan and then putting some of the sauce in and uh, salt and pepper. So we'll bring you back when it's time to eat and you can see just how wonderful this meal is straight from the farm. So there you can see everything's in there. The one thing I forgot to mention as well is that there is dried basil in there as well, which is from the garden. But uh, we're going to put the lid on this and let that Canada Crookneck squash uh, get cooked up, but this is a fantastic way to use squash and also use that pre-cooked rabbit that we uh, put away last week. This is going to be fantastic. We've had this one before. Oh, there we go. It doesn't necessarily look like much, but it is so tasty. Uh, the sweet chili slash Thai sauce, the homemade stuff, definitely uh, is what brings this all together. It's a little bit warm, but I'm still going to taste test it for you. And with the sweet taste of the Canada Crookneck squash, awesome. Can't go wrong with a squash recipe on this channel. Sort of our typical breakfast every day pretty much is eggs with something. Eggs with sausage or an omelet. 
But that's basically what we're going through just about every day this week. Eggs and some type of meat. Well, split pea and ham soup from the pantry has become quite the staple uh, for $50 February. We've really been breaking out some of these heartier meals when we're cutting out other things, that's for sure. But we're about to enjoy this on a snow day with the kids. Well, we are getting into the heart of $50 February. I think we're on the 20th now and also trying to adopt somewhat of a keto kind of diet with the cutting out bread and grain products because we have to buy those. And today has been spent processing sugar beets because we are making our sugar beet syrup uh, to have for the next uh, little bit here. And we didn't want those to go to waste. And it's been a long day, it's almost eight o'clock, so we're trying to throw together something super quick and I thought I would share. Basically, we are using up the last of, well, it's not actually using up, I think I still have another quarter, but this is the last cabbage. Let's see if it'll make it till the end of February. Onions, which are growing terribly, so uh, at least you get some green onions for something. I don't have any lettuce, but you know, we might use it for something. And, we're making chili, chili meat and beans, which we canned up in uh, January with lamb that we'd gotten butchered and beans that needed to be processed. So we're going to throw all this together and it's going to be delicious all in the wok. And uh, yeah, just thought I would share kind of what we're operating on here as we're cr approaching crunch time in February and trying really hard to resist the urge to uh, make any extra purchases. But I think this will be a delicious meal and I will share it when we get back. On a side note on our chili tonight, we're going to actually be eating brie cheese. Now, this cheese, let's see if you can see it here. Come on, bogus. Anyways, it is best before December 31st, 2022. But it's been in the fridge for a long time. But you know what? It doesn't look bad. So I'm going to go with it. And it needs to be eaten up. So, you know, the longer we leave it, the more likely it's going to go yucky. But I think it'll be tasty on this. I don't know. Never had brie on chili before. But we're going to give it a shot. Our homemade chili. We actually raided the freezer for some peppers and peas as well from the garden. And uh, that brie is melting on top. So we'll see. I don't know if we're sold on that. But it needed to be used up or it would be garbage. Well, actually it'd be chicken food. But we're going to eat. We are going to be making pancakes because it's Pancake Tuesday and we're going to make beet pancakes. Sugar beet pancakes. Another great use for us for sugar beets as we're sitting here waiting for the syrup to be finished. But we're going to enjoy these and I suppose they're slightly less carbs because it was only about a cup of flour. So not not as much as regular pancakes. Less anyways. flour anyways. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to enjoy well, tonight we are uh, stepping out of our comfort zone a little bit and experimenting with something that we harvested, I guess not harvested, but foraged from the land uh, this summer, this fall. And that is our curled dock. Now, this is just what we put away for human consumption. We also put quite a bit away for chickens, but we didn't want to go too OTT because we had no idea what to expect from this. So tonight we are making pizza and I thought... And Chris thought, what better way to try using it than do it in our pizza dough? So after a little bit of research, uh, it seems like when you grind this down, uh, basically up to a quarter of your flour content can be this substituted in. So we need four cups to make our two pizzas. So we're going to do one cup of this curled dock ground. It's just flour, sugar, salt, water, and yeast. So we'll tell you how this turns out yes this handy dandy coffee grinder from the thrift store has been a lifesaver we use it all the time for so many things and do you think we can find another one not exactly like it no so for those of you that don't know what curl dock looks like basically that's it it's teeny 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 tiny seeds with a lot of chaff but that is supposed to be fine for you just extra dietary fiber so we'll show you what it looks like in a second so there is what it basically looks like brown it pretty much looks like coffee grounds or very very similar to that so we're gonna measure this out see what we have and keep going till we have the full uh, cup well look at that 
Our pizzas are just about to go into the oven. I am relatively impressed with the crust. It seems very similar to our normal crust, so we'll see how it cooks up. It rose decently, and uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to taste incredible. Now it's time to take the pizzas out of the oven. And we already set off the fire alarm. So no worries there. Kids pizza! Oh boy. Very curious on this crust, to be honest. And grown-up pizza. Both look as good as they, they, they usually do. In my opinion. So we will... Let these cool off a bit and then we'll let you know how this crust turned out. Well, I am the pizza crust connoisseur because I'm the one that loves a nice big crust on my pizza. So I'm the one who is volunteering to try this. So I'm going to try and eat crust first. It's still very hot. Wow. Considering we put a quarter of it that's so it's a grain like you can, it's like a grainy whole grain it kind of tastes like whole wheat i'd do it again it's got little crunchies like millet in it which i assume would be the seed part but all in all chris is gonna love that i say this i guess curl dock is allowed to grow on the lawn well once again for breakfast it's omelets today we have some lamb's quarters in there along with our roasted um, frozen peppers and then we have onions and we have the leftover barbecue goose meat from yesterday but what's sad is that's all that's left of our cheddar cheese thank goodness there's only four days left of the month and there you have it our omelet Cheese is melted on. We also have the leftover hollandaise sauce from yesterday's eggs benedict for breakfast and a bit of fresh, well, actually not fresh, and a bit of our dried parsley from the garden last year. This has become quite the regular meal for February, but it's healthy and it works. Well, we're in the final stretch of $50 February. We only have three more days left. Or is it four more days? Anyways, this morning, potato pancakes with our fresh sugar beet syrup. And lamb sausages. Boy, oh boy, we're eating like kings here. Well, last meal for this week, we are having chicken curry. And I'm cooking it on the wood stove because it's a slow cooker recipe. And this works perfect. So I'm going to give you the ingredients. The recipe is basically one and a half pounds of chicken. We actually used uh, chicken breast out of the chicken we just butchered the other day because we hadn't frozen yet. Mix up a, a, a dusting, I guess you could call it, of three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of curry powder, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, and one teaspoon of salt. And basically just toss that in your meat, coat it completely. It's wonderful. Then in your crock pot, or as I'm doing a cast iron kind of Dutch oven, we put uh, two cups of potatoes. I actually went a little bit higher on the potatoes because we have company for dinner today. So, but basically two cups of potatoes, a cup and a half of sliced carrots. And I did use the last of my open bag of carrots today. So hopefully we can make it until March 1st without opening that second bag that's in the fridge. Otherwise we're budgeting that. Um, but uh, basically one and a half cups of carrots, one cup of onions, and then two cloves of garlic. I actually went with three. Like I said, I'm souping this up a little bit. And uh, then you want to put about a cup of... Uh, chicken broth in there. You're basically going to simmer this in your crock pot or uh, wood stove uh, pending which way you're doing it for four or five hours and then uh, enjoy it on a bed of rice and it is ah, delicious and a great way to use up stuff that we have kicking around. As I said uh, we use potatoes, chicken, uh, the chicken broth was canned over the summertime when we were eating other chickens. So most of this has come right from the farm. And as we're getting to the end of February, it's getting a little bit tougher to get creative with meals that can come just from the farm. Well, it's February 25th and the end of another week for $50 February. But the one thing that has carried us through $50 February, and especially this week, is eggs. We are so fortunate that we are getting a dozen eggs at least a day from our chickens because... Boy, we're eating eggs through this. Even got good at making eggs benedict. But 
So far, we are coming out at $98.35. Well, we are now into March, which means that $50 February is over. And today we're going to be talking about how we did, some thoughts and uh, whatnot for the future, and uh, the numbers. So $50 February was an amazing challenge for us. This was our first year participating. I don't know if it was actually the first year for it, but we're really hoping that they keep going with it. But it certainly was a challenge that you couldn't just jump into. I mean, mm -hmm. if we hadn't heard about $50 February a little bit ahead of time, uh, we probably would have had some troubles because there was a lot of planning and prep that kind of went into that. So basically, uh, yeah, like Stephanie said, how did we get ready for it? Well, basically doing the same thing we would do every year. <laughs> I always think as soon as he said that we were we were talking about we were rehearsing and I was like oh all I could think of is Pinky in the brain same thing we do every day Christopher Try but, it, to <laughs> but it is despite the comedicness of that it is true though because uh obviously February is a month in the winter and you've got to do a lot of prep prior to it uh to basically get yourself through it as far as growing vegetables preserving vegetables all of the stuff that goes along with it so it definitely takes i'm going to say a year almost to prep for it uh which probably goes into a little bit of realistically a growing season is harvest to harvest for us this this challenge really brought it home for us on how we can become less grocery store dependent dependent uh, you know, I mean, if we can eliminate even one trip to the grocery store a month, that's a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And that's saying quite a bit because we grow a lot of our own food, but we still are making those trips. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really taught us where our money was going because we were forced to actually we track. Tracking on another level. Uh, even the stuff that was coming out of the pantry that we may have bought two, three years ago, for all we know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it forced us to track what we were actually using, which I think really gave us a much more accurate monthly budget that potentially we could actually sustain and save a buttload of money, at least on groceries, mm -hmm. on groceries. So we kind of found sort of through this challenge that we didn't significantly change the way that we eat or sort of restrict ourselves too much. Uh, we did budget for a few items such as cheese because dairy is the one thing we don't produce or we don't have at the moment. So we did budget for those. That's the one thing I am going to say we maybe did restrict a little bit, i.e. We, we potentially would have consumed a bit more than we did. But we still like allocated quite a bit towards that. <laughs> it felt like we were on cheese rations. And to, it's to the still... very at the very end. Yeah, at the very end. <laughs> when the favorite cheeses were gone, you were down to the ones that nobody really likes to eat. <laughs> but you're like, we're gonna eat it anyways. <laughs> uh, but no, it really gave us the opportunity to track the things that we actually quote needed to eat, as opposed to the things that we wanted to mm -hmm. eat. Um, there was still a few. And, and, want items yeah and and definitely do not get me wrong because we still ate the things we wanted to eat because i think uh there wasn't a lot of big change for us in how we ate except for one thing which that was the grain type products and this is something that was not new to us we knew about it we just never really had that extra push to do anything about it because yeah, we yeah. weren't tracking it as well as we'd like which i mean that's one of the really great things about the challenge is when you're tracking it then you realize wow we do eat a lot of bread or it's it's harder to just be like oh yeah it's fine it's fine because you actually are confronted with the numbers of look at how much bread we purchased and consumed or made we, yeah we started out february the first week of february i made sourdough bread five of the seven days and that was a real eye-opener for us because all of a sudden, I had half a bag of flour. That's what I allocated for the month was half a bag of flour. And it was like, wow, that's actually a lot of flour gone already. And, and at that volume, you could probably, unless you had a lot of equipment and space to do it, you likely couldn't produce grains no, in that kind of volume. No. So the way I would say it is partway through the month, we did a shift. We didn't cut grains out of our diet. but We made the conscious effort to reduce them. And we're going to see about keeping and we that. stopped making bread no bread we still ate the occasional bits of pasta not mm -hmm. nearly what we were um and uh and the newest discovery is cloud bread oh my goodness talk about amazing uh but i think 
health wise, we've both found cutting the bread now for three weeks. We're not going back just because it's March 1st. We're not going back. I think the removal of bread from our diet is the something removal of a significant amount of bread. Yeah. And, that, for example, and, we had uh, pizza one night in the month and so we made pizza dough. Or uh, what else? Reducing the amount of heavily processed carbohydrates. There we are. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> but all in all, I think it's a good change. And uh, we've certainly felt some health benefits from doing that. I wouldn't say that we've had significant weight losses or anything else through this challenge. Because like I said, we really didn't change the amount we ate or how much we ate. But the bread removal has certainly changed a few things. So I think uh, one thing that we loved about the challenge was that it actually was challenging right this is not something like you said earlier that you can just wake up and decide hey i'm gonna do that today if you didn't do the prep you you're likely not going to be able to meet the goal um and there's lots of different ways to meet that goal so the way we chose to do it wasn't necessarily the only way by no, any means no and everybody has interpreted this challenge differently and that is fine this mm -hmm. is just we kind of took it real hardcore i guess you could say Somewhat. in some ways um and try or tried to, I guess you could say, but still while maintaining our regular diet, because that was something that was important to us was, can we do this the way we normally eat? Mm -hmm. Because if we can, then we're spending way too much at the grocery store. <laughs> the, the thing for us was a challenge is not a challenge if it's not challenging. And it certainly was. I mean, for us, I would say even with not doing dairy yet, yet, watch this space. Uh, I would say that we still grow close to 70% of our food. Grains and dairy were basically the only parts that we didn't grow. Now, don't get me wrong. We splurged on, uh, you know, uh, not in February, but normally we splurge on niceties and things like that. It's not oh, like yeah, we don't have the occasional treats. But for the most part, we could grow 70 to 75% of our food. Well, and, and we keep and we keep aiming for closer to eighty to eighty-five percent, yeah. which is still, I think, attainable. And then beyond the eighty-five, I don't know. That's no, getting well, there's stuff that you just will never be able to grow. You might trade, you might whatever. But I think that was the point for us was even with the amount of production we already have, it still challenged us. It still forced us to think, to make changes, and to really be motivated in our plan for this upcoming growing season. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the real big takeaway from this challenge is that even if you're doing it already, you can still push harder. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so many places to go. And even if you can't do it to the level that we're doing it, anything is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, absolutely. I think it was, it's just, all in all, it's an absolutely fantastic challenge. And uh, thank you to um, Old Swedes Farm and the Cow Emporium for hosting this because- And definitely go back and check out other people's videos uh, that they produced this past month, if you haven't already, because yep. there's some good stuff embedded in that uh, list of videos. So now I guess it's kind of the moment we've all been waiting for, the actual numbers of how we did. And I'm gonna let you do that because you're better with numbers than I am. <laughs> I'm the math girl. <laughs> I have cheat notes. Uh, so basically for the month of February, we tracked anything that came out of the pantry. Basically, we really did not go to the grocery store other than for dairy products. And we did buy some broccoli because it was on at an amazing product price. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was while we were buying dairy products. Um, and in total, we spent $112.15 Canadian. I always want to throw that in because technically in the U.S. we'd be under ten under $100. <laughs> that's, that's debatable. But I guess are, not because who knows what the price of the things we bought were down in the States, right? Um, but anyways, variable thing so you're. technically to be under the $100 for our family of four, we didn't make it. But $112.15 is pretty darn sweet. And I'm going to just kind of quickly run down the breakdown of numbers on that. On dairy, we spent $64.87. That was cheese, milk, mm -hmm. butter, all that sort of good stuff. And that stuff. was the biggest component, which yeah. we knew it was More than food. half was dairy. Uh, then on baking and grain products, whether it was flour or uh, we did buy a pack of English muffins the first week, uh, it was $27.46. That so included so cocoa. Um, well, there was cocoa, sugar, all that sort of stuff was all included in that. Uh, veggies, we bought 
$8.58, where we know we're short, is onions and carrots. We suck mm -hmm. at growing onions and carrots, but watch this space because we're going to try again like we always do. 2023 um, will be the year of the onion. Yeah, maybe. so we bought, there was there was two bags of carrots, two bags of onions, and then those couple broccoli that mm -hmm. we bought. And then junk food was $11.24, and I will admit there was two bottles of Pepsi in there, and uh, the kids had a couple pick-a-pops on a sweet day, and we also buy this fruit drink mix that we put in our water that everybody loves, so that was one jar, which makes a whole bunch of drinks. So if we'd actually cut that out, we would have been a lot closer. We would have been closer, but in a the end, closer. with I kind of broke it down into maybe a subcategory of things that we probably could have done ourselves on the homestead instead of buying. And so the dairy, obviously that's something we're going to try this year with the sheep. So we'll see if that changes for the 2024 challenge. Uh, but the rest of it was $14 and 82 cents. That was either vegetables, i.e. carrots, onions, that sort of thing. And also that fruit drink that I just mentioned in the junk food section is something that we could actually make with our fruit here. Mm -hmm. We just need to get into a bit more fruit production. Mm -hmm. So all in all, if we had taken off the things that we could have produced at home, even with buying junk food and grain and dairy, we would have been under. So Or taken the junk food out. And... Or, yeah, there's many ways to look at that. But you know what? $112.15. I'm not complaining because if I only spend that much every month for the whole year, that's some pretty sweet savings. So Yeah, I think in reality, though, the, the big thing is... For us, at least, this doesn't completely end March 1st. Uh, yes, we are going to stock up some things kind of going forward. But the plan is to still strive for that 85% of our own food. And if we can go above that, great. I think that would be really hard. But uh, so watch the space and see how we do this year. But uh, we definitely know the things that we could omit. Uh, we also acknowledge that there's things that we may still purchase just because at the moment we can. But there's a lot of things we can change, too, mm -hmm. as we sort yeah. of did over the month of February. And the one thing I'm going to mention, and I'm going to link it above wherever it comes up, but we actually did a, a video on the cost to grow our own food on the farm for 2022. And that includes all of our livestock costs, the garden costs, what we actually spent on groceries for the year, mm -hmm. everything all in there to show you what it actually cost us in 2022 to survive. And uh, I think it's interesting information as we go into this, like I said, where we're trying to now kind of operate a little bit differently. 